Hello and welcome to Fire Walk with us this week. We're discussing Twin Peaks episode Drive with a Dead Girl. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. I'm Justin. Alright, so quick plot synopsis for this episode. With Ben Horn in jail for Laura Palmer's murder, Jerry tries to arrange a defense for him. Cooper doubts Ben's guilt, but Truman thinks otherwise. Pete later visits Ben with a taunting audio message from Catherine, saying that uh, she will only back up his alibi if he surrenders all of his property over to her. Elsewhere, the real killer, Leland, under the direction of Bob, stuffs the dead Maddie Ferguson into a golf bag and goes for a joyride, leaving evidence to implicate Ben. Meanwhile, Norma's the estranged mother, Vivian, arrives for a visit with her new husband, Ernie Niles. While Hank reappears after having been gone for several days and reveals to have known Ernie from time in prison. Lucy arrives back in Twin Peaks with her visiting equally simple, equally simpleton older sister Gwen, where Andy tells Lucy he wants to get back together with her. Also, the one-armed man attempts to escape from police custody with a warning that Bob is nearby. Alrighty, so what did you learn about Twin Peaks in this episode? Why Stuff does, be crazy. Why does Leland go golfing in the house anyway? Because he wants to practice his golf swing. Well, okay. there are better there are better places to practice it. He basically jumped out all of his golf balls in the living room and then just went. He wasn't using a putter either. I don't think. No, he's using like a sandwich or something. Yeah, he's using an iron. His aim was fairly decent. It didn't seem like there was any shattered window. At least there isn't. Sure. I don't know why his wife doesn't think there's anything wrong with him doing that, but whatever. I honestly question if he's not fairly insane that she doesn't understand what else anything is going on anymore. And also, what was with him not... Like, what was with, uh... What was her name again? The... His wife? Oh, uh, Sarah? Mm. I guess so. What was with her not mentioning anything about the night before? She <laughs> was kind of out of it. I guess so. She saw a horse. Yeah. She saw a white horse. A white horse. Right. But of course, it was definitely nice at the start of the episode reminding everybody what happened with Leland doing the deed. Yeah. Outside of the building more so, but yeah, still. Yeah, we see Maddie in the golf bag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um... She's wrapped in plastic. I haven't had a chance was... to say that in a long time. It made me happy. Uh, okay. All right. Pete. Well, I guess that's kind of obvious. I guess if he didn't, it would spill into the bag, and it would make it more obvious. She's dead. Wrapped, wrapped in, in plastic. plastic. So, but it sort of made me start to question: How much is Bob in control of Leland? And where is Leland when Bob's kind of in control? And is Leland working with Bob now? Because he seems fairly content of following along with Bob as it sits. Yes. Well, we will... I'm pretty sure that'll be discussed later. We might get answers. Yeah. Maybe. <sighs> uh, ben is arrested and questioned. Mm. And uh, Jerry is the worst lawyer ever. Oh, yeah. most definitely. Indeed. <laughs> Ben, as your brother, your friend, and your lawyer, here's my advice. Get a better lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> Am I thinking of flashback daydreaming of uh, someone dancing? Because the just what happens. Okay. I don't want to say Oh, <laughs> now I remember why that note's in there. Why? Why was that in there? So, why are they weird? Because they are. I, I don't know. Uh, so we get to meet uh, Norma's mom and new husband. Yes. I think I made a note that she is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's one of those special kind of mothers. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Mike reveals that Bob is close. And then he and then he escapes. Yeah, mm. basically knocks out the guard or officer or whatever and mm. leaves. Nice fancy point that's most likely going to come up in the next couple episodes. Bobby's going to be doing some things. Ugh. Yes, Bob. Uh, Bobby 
has a plan to blackmail a lot of people. <sighs> yeah, apparently so. Which I'm sure will just turn out perfectly well for him. Uh huh. Oh, I he's look clever. Oh he... yes, I look very forward to it. He's what recording um, the message from. Yeah, Leo had recorded all of the like contracts he had taken and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, ben is being blackmailed by Catherine. Yeah. Mm, yes. Who says that? I'll only give you an alibi if you sign over everything you own, basically. <laughs> I think basically. I think the one thing she didn't bother with was with the Great Northern. Great Northern Hotel. Yeah, but she yeah. wants the Ghostwood Estates and, and the mill. mill. Yes. Yeah. So, just gotta love that moment where Andy comes in, sees Lucy with baby. It's just like, <gasps> and Andy's like, wait a minute. No. I'm not- is that your baby? And it's like, Andy, she said she was pregnant a week ago. That doesn't happen that fast. <laughs> well, in Andy's mind, it does. <laughs> well, I think it was just more so of a case of, oh, God, baby, duh. Okay, and we get to meet Lucy's sister. Yeah. Gwen. Yeah. And she's a delight. Shut up, Gwen. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much five six out of it. Oh my god. <sighs> and the episode ends where they find Maddie's body mm-hmm. wrapped, wrapped in, in plastic. plastic. <sighs> <laughs> that was a little too perfect. It was. <laughs> so, I feel that I've sort of switched my tune for how the show's sort of gone, where first it's kind of a case of get to the point, what's sort of the point of things, who's going to be counted for doing this. Now it's switched over to the case of we know the certain case of it, when and how long is it going to take for everybody else to catch on. And it's just sort of... They'll catch the case on of, on their own time, although... I don't know. So it just, will they? So it just sort of left me sitting there being like, uh. Well, sort of, uh, Selena had some great driving while I was out driving I on love both Cooper's, sides of the road. I love Cooper's line where he's like, Harry, is uh, driver's ed required in your education program? Well, I think we've got a high school dropout. <laughs> <laughs> that was fairly decent. It did not surprise me, though with any of that sort of stuff is doing like no that's kind of a typical thing that Leland would have done I'm surprised he waited it up until now to actually do something like that and he was about to go clubbing uh, Cooper over the head with the iron it also makes me question if that was the case or if it was just framed to look like that it might have been framed to look like it but um, Cooper never actually went to you know look at him or pay much attention to him because he was distracted no. by other things no I've he was always distracted. I've always had a hard time believing that Leland would have actually attacked him there yeah because Harry is still Harry's know, 20 there. feet away yeah mm. like, and looking in their general direction yeah I just mm. I don't think Bob or Leland is that dumb well then it would be caught right then and there, end of series. Well, and Harry well, would just really, shoot but... him. Nah. Well, yeah. Nah, not that immediately. Arrest him at most, but no, he, he'd shoot. Mm. If you attack a it's cop American with a... cops. No, it doesn't matter where it is. If you attack a cop with a golf club, you're getting shot. That's pretty much a guarantee. Now, nah, within the context of the show, I'd have to disagree. Oh no! Remember that one guy that was shot? <laughs> that yeah. one guy that was shot by Andy. Yeah, that's true, but yeah, it's more of a case of they don't exactly know the person. They're more counting him as a suspect sort of thing. Whereas it sits at the moment, Leland's insane, but he's still kind of counted as an important person within the society of the town. Anyway, so at this point, who is your prime suspect? Well, it's Bob. We probably don't want to ask at this point. <laughs> and I'm I mean, guessing it's kind of the case of who killed Laura in that sort of case. I mean, Ben apparently has done something because he's worried about, you know, something here. Well, Ben is a horrible person. 
Yes, he's probably done horrible things that he can be found guilty of. And, you know... But whether or not that leads to the fact that he was the one that killed Laura, I don't think that's the case. He's more concerned about all the other additional things that he's going to get hit for. (laughs) Well, yeah, obviously. He's more concerned about... The prostitution, the drugs, the oh yes, <laughs> international <laughs> drug smuggling. You I know mean, the low, the lower charge. I mean, at this point, they would, they would obviously know that he's, you know, that guy that runs that place in Canada, when I jacks. Yes. So I mean, he's obviously going to be charged for something at some point. Maybe. As it sort of sits now, I don't know. The only one particular point that I kind of see is Leland, but I don't know. I don't know if I have sort of enough points for it. Leland is Bob. Well, now, supposedly. Again, it's kind of the thing I'm wrestling with, where the question comes... How long has Bob been in Leland? Because from what I understand, it was up to the point where he killed uh, Jacques Leneau. That's true. That's when Leland's hair went white. Yes, and that's kind of the point I sort of place it as that. But it sort of leaves me questioning, was that when? Or has it lasted longer than that? We'll find out very soon. Okay, then. Okay, so... Do either of you have any questions for me? I had a question at some point, but I had it in my notes, so I don't remember what it was. <laughs> mm. I know. I'm great. So, out of the particular things you mentioned, there was the fan, and the lights, and some other particular things. It was the record a thing of importance? Yes. The skipping record thing? Yes. Yeah. Did it skip? Did it skip? I know that one time it skipped. Every time we've seen a record player, um, well, most of the times we've seen a record player, it's been skipping. Mm. Man, they really need to get that checked on. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Any other questions? No, I think that covers it for this episode. Alrighty. So, do either of you have anything you want to bring up? Is there going to be any more importance to Donna and the uh, biker person? James. John? James. That was it. For their specific thing? Because as it sort of seems, they seem to be okay with supposedly helping their friends left okay from what they know. Um, what, yeah. Oh. <laughs> There's going to be some stuff that happens soon. Oh, boy. Anything you want to, anything else you want to bring up? Nope. Aside from think, the typical quotes, nah. I think there's more next episode for certain. Nope, not at all. Nothing happens. Okay. So. All right, no. Well, whatever. All right, so the next episode is called Arbitrary Law. Any Sounds idea boring. what that might be about? Uh, nothing. Is somebody going to bring down the law? Kind of. Okay. There's going to be a sprinkler that's brought down. Uh, thanks to <gasps> some smoke. Wait, Probably. sprinkler down... Oh, those kinds of sprinklers. Yeah, in a building. Where? Hmm. Okay. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for this week for Fire Walk with us. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And Justin. <laughs>